The Irish road racing season continues, but this time at Meath in the south of the country as the popular Kells road races return to the calendar with some of the biggest names in the sport taking part. The fastest man in qualifying is Derek Shields as he claims pole position in both the Superbike and Supersport classes. With the likes of Derek McGee and Adam McLean missing through injury, he starts this one as favourite. Yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of got to help off a lot of local lads here, so it's sort of come down and do it. And John, kindly enough, gave me the bike. So, um, yeah, it is. It's quite a good circuit. A couple of jumps, uh, a few road ends, a bit of a sweeper down the bottom. That's about the height of it. But um, no, it's good. It's exhilarating, anyway. One man who can't be discounted is Michael Sweeney. He's still seeking his first win of the year, but he has pushed Shields close in previous meetings at Cookstown and Tandrigi. It's been a while since I've been here. I think it's 2015 since I've been here, but um, the track is still the same. Um, the surface is really good, so hopefully we get a good day's race and get out before the rain comes. One last minute entry is Paul Jordan. He has just his super sport machine here at Kells, but can't be discounted even in the big bike races, despite his lack of power. Yeah, he just got me on me 600, but we just were on ourselves. You know, it was one of them last minute dash things. We weren't too sure if we were going to do the meeting or not. So we just uh, threw all together and just come down and just had a bit of crack and have a run round. So it's the Carbon Property Management and Friends of Road Racing Open, which includes the big 1,000cc superbike and super stock machines. Derek Shields in pole position with Michael Sweeney, Paul Jordan and Thomas Maxwell in very close company on the front row. Andy Farrell heads row two, which includes Daryl Tweed and Alan Connor. Space is at a premium on this tight, twisting circuit. If you've never seen this track before, then you're in for a thrill. It's one of the most spectacular layouts on the road racing calendar as away they go, with Shields pushing to the front ahead of Thomas Maxwell as they power towards the jumps, which is one of the most incredible sections of any track on the planet. Here they go, and it's like motocross racing, but on tarmac as they fly through the air. Shields the most spectacular of this front wave of riders as he looks to lose his rivals, but Michael Sweeney in second and right on his rear. Maxwell third, Jordan fourth, Daryl Tweed with a great move on the brakes to go into fifth past Andy Farrell. What a start! Shields on the superbike, Sweeney on the superstock, and they're making it something of a two horse affair on this opening lap. Maxwell third, and Jordan losing ground on the far sections of this circuit on his 600cc machine. Where Jordan can make up ground is on the brakes into the corners, and if he can find good exit speed, then that will help, but it will be minimal on this super quick circuit. Jordan racing his own 600 machine here, just as he did at Cookstown back in April. Here they come. They really are magnificent men in their flying machines as they come to complete the opening lap of seven. Easy to see why race fans flock to watch this meeting as Sweeney closes in on the brakes, but will he lose momentum as a result? Jordan trying too hard on the brakes, and an error from him gives him more work to do. Sweeney still holding on to Shields as they hit the jumps again, and oh my, they hit the ground hard and speeds the key as they power out of the wiggles and wobbles. They really travel some distance. The camera angle shortens the distance that what it truly is. Road racing legend Cameron Donald has always maintained it's his favourite stretch of any circuit, and it's easy to see why. And that's something coming from the Australian rider and two-time Isle of Man TT winners. We ride, well, we were with Michael Sweeney. He continues to hound Derek Shields. He's doing his utmost to stay with him and perhaps force an error from the multiple Irish Superbike champion as they hit the dip on the approach to Kells Corner. A bigger gap between them this time with Maxwell third and Jordan fourth. Shields sweeping out to make the turn in, whereas Sweeney took a straight line approach as Maxwell scrubs the speed off and then back on the power of the turn as the front forks work over time on this bumpy circuit. Hitching a ride on the back of Shields as the landscape flies by in a blur and it's all about the landing. Well, Shields will lead at the end of this lap with Sweeney refusing to let go in second place. He's still close enough to keep the pressure piled high on Shields. Now just watch the front of Sweeney's bike as he and his machine go airborne. Incredible. It really is a roller coaster ride with the suspension working over time. And ideally, you don't want to hit the bumps as you hit the brakes to slow for corners, but that's the very nature of this circuit. Riding with Daryl Tweed, the current ultra lightweight Manx Grand Prix champion, showing his versatility here on the bigger machinery.
Different styles on the approach as Shields sweeps into the turn, whereas Sweeney squares off the corner. Maxwell still third. But Jordan, much closer this time, and certainly still with an eye on a podium finish, which would be remarkable given that he's on the Supersport 600 machine. Shields airborne. Oh, and so too Sweeney, who has a wobble on landing, but remarkably at that speed, probably doesn't notice. So Sweeney crossing up and Shields still leading, and a hint that the gap between them is growing. We should also keep an eye on Forrest Dunn in the second wave of riders, as he could well be in the top six at the end of this lap. Here we go again, lap three, less than a couple of seconds between them, as Shields just gets a little bit more out of his superbike than Sweeney Superstock. Shields with a potential approach down the road while Sweeney keeps it out to his left-hand side. Here is Forrest Dunn. So Paul Jordan, there's his target, Thomas Maxwell, as Jordan hits the jumps. Well, Derek Shields pulling away, you can see certainly Sweeney's trying on the brakes, he's scrubbing off the, the, the speed. But perhaps Shields is carrying more speed around the turn. And Sweeney's losing it on the exit because he has to slow a lot quicker. Derek Shields on the roller coaster, practically riding it like a motocross bike on the pegs. 96, Andy Farrell just inside Alan Connor. Oh, and a wobble from Jordan. John Paul Jordan then coming up to complete lap three. And he's certainly closing in on Thomas Maxwell. And as we've seen, he's certainly trying. Well, Michael Sweeney is trying to keep Derek Shields in his sights. And we'll see him, I'm sure, close up on the approach into the corner. But that gap is growing. Boyd Connor is ahead of Farrell. Now, this is as close as Paul Jordan has been to Thomas Maxwell. Maxwell with a little glance over his shoulder. Into the Kells turn. Sweeney on the power, but he's just losing a little bit of grunt to Derek Shields. Riding with Daryl Tweed. This is the approach to the Kells crossroads. Hitting the brakes down through the gearbox. Daryl Tweed battling away. Here's the battle for third and fourth still between Thomas Maxwell and Paul Jordan coming up to complete lap. Little bit off the power then back on again as they approach the jumps. Meanwhile, Derek Shields is already out at McGee's. Daryl Tweed is on his own on the road, but he's fighting Forrest Dunn for fifth place. Forrest Dunn in the second wave of riders. Whether he knows that depends on whether he's getting any boards on the side of the track. Paul Jordan just losing out to Thomas Maxwell in terms of power. But here we go, this is where he can gain, and he is gaining big time. Jordan gaining on Maxwell, but he'll lose ground now. Maxwell with the big 1,000cc machinery will just have that little bit more power to play with. Well, Derek Shields in amongst the slower traffic. Paul Fallon, number 99 at the back of the field. Michael Sweeney coming up to complete this lap as well. Well, I think Sweeney knows then, despite all his best efforts in the opening couple of laps, that second place Looks to be the best he can achieve in this one. This one, though, is far from over. Maxwell and Paul Jordan, third and fourth. Jordan desperate to get past. Derek Shields just has to maintain this now, hit his apexes. Just keep hitting his points, squirting the power. 
and Jordan looking for a move. It's got to be on the brakes, you would say. Certainly, I'd be surprised if he can out-muscle his way past Maxwell. He certainly is, but Maxwell now back on the gas. Absolutely thrilling. So Jordan knows, he think the best plan, really, for Paul Jordan... Well, if you could say it's a plan, is to get him onto the last corner. Derry Shields picking his way through the last wave of riders. So here comes Derry Shields, takes the checkered flag. Now, Paul Jordan, this is his moment, is it? He's got to get past Thomas Maxwell. Maxwell covering the line into the turn. It will be Maxwell in third place. Jordan will have to take fourth. Wow. What a cracking opening race. A great ride from Forrest Dunn to claim fifth, with Paul Jordan missing out on the podium by a tenth of a second. Sweeney is second, with Shields taking the win. Ah, it's a nice day, enjoying the track. One lap there, a bit hurry over the jump, but uh, <laughs> we got away with it anyway, but now enjoy the race. Coming up next is the turn of the Supersport 600cc machines. County Meath in Ireland is the location for the Cowles Road Races and this peaceful, beautiful setting is about to reverberate to the sound of motorcycle racing. Paul Jordan begins the 600cc race on the front row of the grid, but pole position goes to Derek Shields as he looks to make it two wins out of two. Michael Sweeney and Daryl Tweed join them with Andy Farrell and Kevin Fitzpatrick on row two. Thomas Maxwell is a non-starter. The track is cleared ahead of seven laps of Supersport Racing. This promises to be a much closer affair than the big bikes in the opening race as Shields hits the front with Sweeney and Jordan in hot pursuit. Sweeney pushing for second, but here comes Paul Jordan who's flying and incredibly pushing for the lead as he looks to draw alongside and he pushes past Derek Shields. Wow, through the jump section too. Amazing. Fitzpatrick is fourth with Tweed and Farrell scrapping for fifth. In fact, Tweed looking menacing as he goes through to take fourth. Well, Jordan missed out on pole position by just two tenths of a second to Shields. Sweeney was third fastest on his MJR Yamaha, and that's where we're riding now. Well, Paul Jordan looking to make a break for it from Derek Shields. Sweeney still third. It's looking a little bit close for fifth place between 75, Kevin Fitzpatrick and Andy Farrell. Two riders going for the same little stretch of racing circuit. again with Sweeney even though it's 600 still spectacular as they go airborne well Paul Jordan just missed out on a podium in the open race maybe just a little bit scrappy into the final term but he's back on the power again Shields now looking to get a little bit of slipstream if he can he goes airborne, but not close enough. So Paul Jordan on lap two, still leading. You have to factor in the second wave of riders as well, of course. This is with the man still in third place, Michael Sweeney. It's Daryl Tweed behind him on the road and on the overall time leaderboard. Well, these three certainly making a break for it now, Jordan. From Shields, from Sweeney. Back with Paul Jordan. So Jordan with open track ahead of him. Looking back from Daryl Tweed. Still holding fourth place. Losing Kevin Fitzpatrick and Andy Farrell. So on the brakes to complete yet another lap. And once again, the leaderboard Goes Paul Jordan from Derek Shields, much neater from Jordan this time. Michael Sweeney hanging on in third place. So they're about to hit the jumps once again. Jordan out of his seat, you know he hits a jump. 
They really do ride this section on the peg sometimes. So Sweeney just losing sight of the two men in front. Shields threatening to get past Jordan, but he hasn't got the speed by the looks of it. It will have to be a pass on the brakes into this right-hand turn. Jordan pushes out wide. This could be the gap, is it? Here comes Shields. Oh, Shields is going for it. Shields goes through. Can he turn in time? He can. Fantastic racing. Jordan just yielding and letting Shields go through as well. He knew that Shields had the advantage. Didn't take anything risky. So Jordan back to second place and Derek Shields back on for win number two. But here comes Jordan again. He's passed Shields once already. He's looking to pass him again. And he is trot now. He won't get him. I was going to suggest perhaps that he might try and get him on this final turn as they come to complete the lap. But he's passed him over the jump section, which they're approaching very soon. And of course, that's allowed Sweeney back in as well. He's gained a little bit more ground in third place. Now Jordan trying to close the gap on Derek Shields. Shields holding his line and holding his nerve. And holding his brakes just that little bit later, perhaps. Sweeney watching it all unfold in front of him. So, what a race this is. We said it would be close. And it is, oh my goodness, what was going on there? Derek Shields with a problem, perhaps. His leg came out. I don't think he was expecting Paul Jordan up the inside. Oh, my goodness me. That has to be a mechanical issue, I would imagine. It has to be. So Derek Shields, the race leader, retires. What drama. And also, Paul Jordan retakes the lead. But, my goodness me, that was close. He wasn't expecting Derek Shields to stick his leg out. And I don't think Derek Shields was expecting to see Paul Jordan come up the inside of him. It's let Michael Sweeney back in. So Michael Sweeney, who's held third throughout this race, now up to second, and perhaps if he can do something about Paul Jordan, can take the win. Although Paul Jordan on a 600 is a real neat, tricky character. This is his class. So this is the moment, looking from Derry Shields' bike. Oh! That looked like contact. That was contact. My goodness me, that was so close. So Paul Jordan recomposing himself after that incident, that near miss with Derek Shields. And he continues to lead from Michael Sweeney. Daryl Tweed still holding third place, although he's certainly some distance further back. No one in the second wave really troubling the top five. Kevin Fitzpatrick and Andy Farrell still squabbling over fourth place. Oh, my goodness. Another big moment on landing for Michael Sweeney. So then, not far to go. Jordan across the line. Sweeney still in second place. Daryl Tweed should cross the line in third. Sweeney trying everything he can to hold on to Paul Jordan. But Paul Jordan, on every little section of this track, just seems to pull just a few centimetres further ahead from Michael Sweeney. Michael Sweeney still searching that first win this season. He took podiums at Cookstown and Tandragee. Paul Jordan just missed out on pole position. Is he on for a race win here at Kells? Coming up to another spectacular part of the circuit. The fans and the riders all love this. Here comes Jordan, you'll see him sit up in a moment. Nice and neat. Again, Sweeney just a little bit more spectacular, but you do not get any extra points. So, one more lap to go. Four. Paul Jordan. Michael Sweeney's air. His front wheel pops in the air. Hey, he's certainly trying. Oh, 
slower traffic up ahead. No blue flags, of course, to let the slower riders know that the quicker men are coming through. So they'll just have to hope they'll pass them, and that certainly they should do. Paul Jordan will get through, and so too should Michael Sweeney. So the last lap then at Kells in the 600cc Supersport race, and Paul Jordan looking like it's going to be his. Michael Sweeney will have to settle for second place. Well, what a dramatic 600 race it's been. We saw Derek Shields leading as Michael Sweeney just has to back off. There's nothing to be gained in taking risks at this late stage. He knows he's not going to catch this man. As I was saying, Shields led, then Jordan passed him spectacularly on the opening lap. Shields retook the lead, then retired, and Paul Jordan takes the checkered flag to win at Kells. What a race we've just witnessed. Michael Sweeney in second. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, that was great. A race win and a fastest lap of the race for Paul Jordan. Michael Sweeney takes second with Daryl Tweed grabbing a podium place in third. Paul Jordan pulls over on his victory parade lap and will offer a lift back to the paddock for Derek Shields. They will have plenty to talk about after that thrilling duel, which would have certainly gone all the way to the chequered flag had Shields not been forced out with a mechanical issue. They now have a winner piece going into the last race of the day, the grand final. Coming up next, it's the Super Twins and the 125 Moto3 machines. The beautiful County Meath in Ireland is the setting for the Kells Road Races. Next up is the Abbey Moulding Super Twins race. Andy Farrell in pole position, having qualified four tenths of a second quicker than Vinnie Brennan. Roy Graham and Kevin Baker also on the front row with Tommy Henry, John Ella and Dom Cottrell on row two. Away we go, and Vinnie Brennan from the front of, or the middle of the front row, storms into the lead. Second wave away. 4-1-2, Martin Currens. On board with Vinnie Brennan, who loses the lead. So Andy Farrell goes through. Kevin Baker in third place. On board with Veronica Hankajova, and she gets the double whammy side by side. Through they come. But it is Martin Currens who is leading the second wave of riders. Veronica Hankajova looking to blast away, pass and reclaim one of the places she lost. Out front, though, it's Andy Farrell who leads. Vinny Brennan has dropped back. Kevin Baker's now in second place. So then, they come to complete the lap. It's Farrell from Baker with Brennan in third. Riding again with Hanka Chiova. Will any of the second wave riders make an impression on the leaderboard? Well, she's picking off riders one by one. So replay the start then from Andy Farrell. That looked like contact was made by Vinny Brennan. So Brennan into the lead at the start of the race as they hit the jumps. But Farrell soon making his way through to take over at the front. It is still Farrell from Baker. Brennan just losing touch a little bit as they come down to complete this lap. Farrell turns it in time, Baker still in second place. Brennan hanging on for third. It would sound absolutely magnificent around the Kell circuit. But Kevin Baker just losing touch perhaps with Andy Farrell. 
maybe gain ground on the brakes into the turn at the geese. Back again with Hankachova. And she's really up to speed now. Farrell just protecting his line. Baker swept over to the right hand side, perhaps weighing up the option of a move on the brakes, but wasn't close enough, so just had to slid or slide back in behind Andy Farrell. The front fork showing just how bumpy this circuit is. 67, Nigel Colgan, followed by Noel Smith. It is still all about these two out front. Farrell should lead, oh, he's, he has lost ground. And Kevin Baker takes over at the front. Andy Farrell just got that all wrong on the brakes, overshot the turn almost. Certainly went in far too deep, more, much more deeper than he expected. But now, can he blast his way past Kevin Baker and retake the lead? He's not close enough, or is he on the brakes? Oh, it's close, it's mighty close. Can he turn in time though? Farrell from Baker, he does, but having lost the lead on the first, on the last turn, he regains it from Kevin Baker. 74 is Tommy Henry, could be on for a top six finish. Well, they've made light work of making their way past David Graham. Andy Farrell still leading from Kevin Baker. He'll be certainly fresh in his mind what happened on the last corner before. David Broderick, the billing in the Farrell Baker sandwich. Here they come. Much needed this time. No mistake from Andy Farrell. Kevin Baker still staying with him though. Here's the man in third place, Vinnie Brennan. He's the last lap flag. It's far from settled though, this third position. And so too is this, Andy Farrell and Kevin Baker squabbling over first. However, He's certainly trying, here comes Kevin Baker trying to get around the outside, but he can't quite make the move stick, but can he get back on the power quick enough to make his way past Andy Farrell? It looks like Andy Farrell still has the lead of the race, but Kevin Baker wants this one. He's trying, trying, trying to find that way through. Time is running out. Road is running out. They've got one more turn to come after the jumps. Here they go. Oh, there's traffic up ahead. Andy Farrell and Kevin Baker for victory. Oh, Baker's chanting his arm around the outside. Can he get turned in time? No, the slower traffic is in head. Andy Farrell's going to make it. Andy Farrell takes the checkered flag. Kevin Baker takes second. And it looks like Vinnie Brennan will be third. What an end to this race it has been. Wow, another corker at Kells. So Andy Farrell with the win, eight tenths of a second. The advantage over Kevin Baker with Vinnie Brennan in a close third. Here's the grid for the 125 Moto3 race. Kevin Fitzpatrick in pole position with Sam Grief, Gary Dunlop and Melissa Kennedy for company. Wayne Kennedy, Sean Leonard and Paul Gotland start on row two. The past meets the future as the 125 two strokes take on the Moto 3 250cc four stroke single cylinder machines. It's Melissa Kennedy who leads. Gary Dunlop in third, all over the back of Samuel Grief. Four star for 75, Kevin Fitzpatrick, who began in pole position as Dunlop goes past Kennedy to take over at the front. And Kennedy heading back. There's certainly plenty of power in Melissa Kennedy's machine. Here they come, and this time Dunlop coming under pressure from Grief. 
uh, having said that, Dunlop late on the brakes goes into first place past Kennedy. Well, I was anticipating Dunlop dropping back to third, but here he is leading. It is the Moto3 machines that lead the way. Gary Dunlop from Melissa Kennedy. And Kennedy, is she about to lose second place to Sam Grief? Here they are with the brakes, and Kennedy has got the line. She can turn it in time. She will hold on to second. No. Grief goes through to second. Kennedy in third. So looking back then from the race leader, Gary Dunlop. Well, Kennedy certainly looked to be very quick in terms of straight lines, power and speed. She's losing out this time. It looks to be between Gary Dunlop and Sam Grief. And all the while, it looks like Kevin Fitzpatrick is now up to speed. He's threatening to take third place from Melissa Kennedy. It looked like it was going to be a three-horse race, but Fitzpatrick, who began this race in pole position, the grief looking to close in on the brakes on Dunlop, unable to get close enough to make a move. Back on the power. Keep an eye on Kevin Fitzpatrick further back. He looks to be gaining ground on Melissa Kennedy. We're riding with Melissa Kennedy. She sees the two front runners disappearing a little bit into the distance. Here they come, almost side by side. Dunlop with the inside line, and also the battle is on for third place. Fitzpatrick on the inside of Kennedy. Now, can he turn it in time as the first two bites come through? Dunlop from Grief. And it is Fitzpatrick is third, Kennedy back to fourth. Well, can Kevin Fitzpatrick mix it with the front two? Gary Dunlop breaking away. Sam Grief certainly losing power on the run into the turn of McGee's, and Fitzpatrick goes through to second place. All the while, Gary Dunlop just pulling away a little bit at the front. And we're riding with the girl in fourth place, Melissa Kennedy. That's the battle for second up ahead that she can see. They're side by side as Dunlop heads his way down to Cowles. And Fitzpatrick just nudges his way ahead of Green. Kennedy still very much in it in fourth place. Now Green looking for a move again on Fitzpatrick. It's close between those two for second place. And it will be doing the world of good for Gary Dunlop because he won't want to be involved with what's going on behind. So they're not too far away from the checkered flag. It looks like it will be Gary Dunlop. He'll take the win, but who will take second place? Will it be Kevin Fitzpatrick? Will it be Samuel Grief? Or could it be Melissa Kennedy? Who's on the brakes? Can she make the turn? Dunlop takes the win. Fitzpatrick is second. And Kennedy just takes third. Two and a half seconds covering the top four at the end of that one. Sam Grief just missing out on third place to Melissa Kennedy. Kevin Fitzpatrick second with Gary Dunlop on the top step. There's still one more race to come, and it's the big one. The grand final is next. The Kells Road Races in Ireland has provided some great action so far, and next it's the big one, the grand final. Derek Shields took the win on his superbike in the open race earlier today, and he starts as firm favourite in the grand final. He is in pole position. Can Michael Sweeney take a win on his superstock machine? Will Paul Jordan grab a podium on his super sport bike? We're about to find out. Here we go. This is it then, the big one. Certainly, oh, Thomas Maxwell. I was going to say, the rest of the field need a good start if they're going to do something about Derek Shields. And Thomas Maxwell with an absolute corker. However, we're riding on board with Michael Sweeney. As again, the super bikes and the super stock machines and super sport, of course, all look very spectacular over the jumps on his opening lap. But Thomas Maxwell, who looked as if perhaps he'd pushed ahead of Derek Shields, finds himself back in second place. 
And here goes Michael Sweeney. He's just lost third place to Paul Jordan, but he's back ahead of him again. Well, Derek Shields, the little threat from Thomas Maxwell at the start, but Maxwell into second. Maxwell will be enjoying this. He's ahead of Sweeney. Jordan is there in fourth place. Then it's Tweed, Connor and Farrell scrapping over fifth. Here's Michael Sweeney looking for a way through. He'll try a move on the brakes, perhaps, maybe not. I was going to suggest that he would try and find a move into the final corner, but he's powered past Thomas Maxwell. Oh, and another big landing for Michael Sweeney. Paul Jordan doing well in fourth. So then, it's Derek Shields who leads at the end of lap one. Michael Sweeney's up to second. Thomas Maxwell is third. Paul Jordan is fourth. But Thomas Maxwell... Well, he had that incredible battle in the open race with Paul Jordan. And, oh, Sweeney's a retirement. That's it from Michael Sweeney. Something's gone pop by the looks of things. He's pulling over. So Paul Jordan could be on for a podium. Thomas Maxwell for second place. That's who ride with. Oh, Derek Shields. Master class from him on the John Burroughs bike. Already pulling away. Thomas Maxwell doing his utmost to stay with him. So too, Paul Jordan. And all Michael Sweeney can do is sit and watch. What a shame. He could be on his way again by the looks of things. He certainly is. Daryl Tweed. Battling away. So Shields, and that gap is getting bigger. It's Maxwell still in second, but Paul Jordan is right with him. And uh, Maxwell with a little glance around. Certainly, Jordan looked as if he was going to fire his way past Maxwell. Oh, as Maxwell both wheels in the air. Here they come. Jordan refusing to let go of Thomas Maxwell. Maxwell just needs to keep his eyes focused front. He'll gain nothing by knowing who's behind him. He just needs to hold on to his lines. Well, that's exactly what Derek Shields is doing. No surprise that he's putting the fastest lap of the race again. Been a great year so far for Derek Shields' success at the Cookstown 100 and the Tandrigi 100. And again, riding it like a motocross bike, feet on the pegs, backside in the air. But that's the nature of this circuit, as we can see. Now, what can Paul Jordan do about Thomas Maxwell? Thomas Maxwell still holding on for second place. And he should still hold on. It would be some effort from Paul Jordan on a 600cc machine to find a way through on Thomas Maxwell. That just does not disappoint, does it? My goodness me, Jordan goes through. Can he turn in time? He can. But the problem is now he's holding off the big machine of Thomas Maxwell. But my goodness me, Jordan on the power out of the turn at McGee's. I don't think he'll do anything about this boy, though. Michael de Coffield in the second wave of riders. Looking for a top ten finish. Michael Sweeney is still on track, but he is going very, very slowly. Someone not going very slowly is Paul Jordan and Thomas Maxwell. Now, this is Sweeney. Certainly doesn't appear to be at racing speed. Whatever issue his machine has means he definitely is pulling in and will spectate the rest of this race. What a shame. Daryl Tweed and Alan Connor side by side. Tweed just ahead of Connor going into the last turn. Remarkable ride from Paul Jordan. He's pulling away from Thomas Maxwell now. I think he blames himself perhaps for missing out on the podium in the open race. 
But Derek Shields looks as if he's going to be a race winner here in the grand final. However, never say never. We've seen Michael Sweeney retire. Now, Gareth Keyes, even though he's not on the same bit of road as these two, he's in the second wave, but he's battling for sixth place with Daryl Tweed and Alan Connor. They're probably not aware of that. But my goodness me, these two will have something to talk about at the end of this one. And here comes Tweed again, outside, looking to do it late on the brakes. Third in time. Oh, he's gone wide, but can he get back on the power? And Connor goes through again. What a cracking battle between Alan Connor and Daryl Tweed. Paul Jordan is dropping Thomas Maxwell. That's incredible. Great from Paul Jordan. Riding with Paul Garland. Another rider looking for a top 10 finish. Well, the gap between Derek Shields and Paul Jordan continues to grow, and so too the gap between Paul Jordan and Thomas Maxwell. But Derek Shields on the Burroughs engineering machine, crosses the line. On his way, it would seem, to victory. Never count your chickens, of course. Jordan in second, still Maxwell third, and a look up the road, and that is the gap back to Paul Jordan, at around nine seconds. Jills with plenty to play with, even if he does come up among slower traffic, he's got time in hand to take his time and just manage this one all the way to the checkered flag. It was a last minute decision from him to come and race here at Cowles, and it's his certainly one he is not regretting. The fans loving to loving seeing him here as well. And into the air. Oh, Derek Shields again. Not far to go then for Derek Shields into the final turn. Here he comes to take the checkered flag. It's the second win of the day on the superbike and a wheelie to boot for Derek Shields. Paul Jordan, second place. Thomas Maxwell should be in third. A convincing win for Derek Shields with Paul Jordan, a superb second on his 600cc bike. Thomas Maxwell third with Boris Dunn, a cracking fourth. Yeah, good, good end of the day, you know, two wins. Big bike, uh, 600 blew up, unfortunately, for sure. That's racing, yeah. Thanks to Maddie, the Burroughs engineering crowd, coming down to give me a hand. So, yeah, brilliant. Two wins. Happy out. A man of the meeting award, two for Derek Shields, and a smile on the face of Paul Jordan. You know, after the track, just like, you know, for the, the event been off for a few years now, it's really nice to see such a big crowd here, and it's, it's good, and hopefully we can return next year again. And a delighted Thomas Maxwell. A good battle in the first race, he had me on it, so. I was kind of tired there in that last one, so I let him on him. Seen Sweeney went out, so settled for third, but all in all, a good weekend now. Yeah, Two yeah. thirds in the bag, so happy days. Another good haul of points for Derek Shields as he seeks to become the first winner of the coveted Metzler King of the Roads title. With that, it's time to send a fond farewell from Kells in County Meath.